Hi everyone, welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab and this very strange device that is on my bench. So I was looking around for antiques not long ago and I was at this barn, kind of a barn slash shop kind of thing. And uh, there's a whole bunch of old shelving units in there with all sorts of very odd looking antique items. And uh, this was one of them that really caught my attention. I looked at this and thinking, what is this thing? So uh, it followed me home and now it's on the bench. So some of you might be looking at this thing going, oh, I know exactly what that is. Uh, if you do, feel free to put something in the comments below. Uh, as for myself, I can find no reference to anything that would uh, even hint to this. And I have a couple ideas of what it might actually be, but uh, I'll explain that throughout the video and how I came to that idea. But uh, what we'll do is we'll take a look at this thing and uh, we're going to open it up and see exactly how it functions and what's going on with it. And maybe that'll give you an idea of what this thing could be or what it is. So uh, I'm guessing it's around 40s era just because of the cloth wiring and the transformer and all that. So it could be 30s, it could be 40s, maybe even early 50s. I would say early 50s would probably be about the end for something like this, just the way it's designed and everything. But um, who knows? So anyways, let's take a closer look at this thing and open it up and uh, see what we discover. Maybe we can figure this thing out. And again, if you know what it is, please, by all means, put something in the comments below. All right, let's get started. Here's a closer look at the tag on the transformer. So it says Jefferson. So it says Canadian Jefferson Electric. It almost sounds like Canadian General Electric, but uh, Canadian Jefferson Electric Company. And then down here, it says Toronto, Canada. So it looks like that says 6.5, so I'm going to give a piece of uh, paper towel here, a squirt of Windex. Let's see if we can maybe clean that off a bit. I kind of don't want to hurt. This is a very waxy kind of dirt on here. So I don't really want to hurt the, uh, the tag on it at all. So Windex is mellow enough that it's not going to do anything. So you see that? Yeah, there we go. That's a little bit better. Nice defocused camera there. Okay, so there we go. So the catalog number is CSA-1124. Uh, it uh, says 6.5. So the secondary volt, 6.5 volts. You see that there? Nice little punch mark for the decimal there. 120 volts, uh, 60 cycles, and uh, volt amps, 25. So uh, I imagine a product called Vim would clean this up. You'd have to be very careful with it, but that would take that kind of a waxy residue off. I'd be very careful uh, about using any type of uh, you know solvent-based cleaner because it might take the paint off. I wouldn't want to do that. This transformer looks like it's in very nice condition. So uh, there's that portion of it. I'll step back the camera out here. We look at the other side. So the line cord goes in this side, and then we have two... Oh, very, very hard. This rubber would be almost like glass now, but uh, supposedly rubber grommets. And then we have uh, some cloth wires here. So this one grounds to the base. So obviously the ground is part of this. And then this one runs up to here. Now this is broken here, which usually means that this has been push pushed on or something like that, or maybe, I don't know, pulled on too many times, I don't know. And this is very loose. And it looks like a, like a lamp holder. So, yeah, doing this all on camera here. Tighten this thing up and move it around. It has a standard line cord on it. And the rubber on the line cord, you know, one thing about this very old rubber compound that they used on these cords way back when is it's still good today. So I've noticed that with a lot of these rubber cords, like the rubber cords that you would find on irons and stuff like that, they're all really good. Whereas uh, the rubber that came out later, uh, it, it would crystallize and break all the time. So this is a, an early rubber compound and it seems to be pretty good. Now I've come across lots of radios with rubber wiring in them and it's all crystallized. But uh, this is just, it's in, you know, very nice condition. And it doesn't look like it's been changed because you'd actually have to take, take the uh, end bell off the transformer to get inside here to change that. You see that? It goes right directly in. So I think this is the original cord. So down here, light on the subject a little bit better right there. So uh, you can remove this screw here or, you know, move this around. This thing looks like it does come out. Looks like it's been cut. And as you can see, there's a hole in the bottom there. So this fits onto here like so, and then you tighten this. So it would, you know, you could move this around, which is kind of odd, right? Now, another thing that's really interesting is you'll notice the lamp holder here. You can turn the, turn the lens around or turn the, the actual bulb holder, I guess you could call it, around. See this 
Nothing in there, no bulb, right? So you can turn this around and then tighten this up, and I imagine it would hold this. Yeah, it does. So it would hold it like a brake. It has a hole in the top, maybe for venting a high wattage light bulb or something like that, letting the, you know, letting the heat escape, possibly. Now, one thing that I've noticed with this thing is you can move this, so you can move this little thumb screw, and it looks like you could actually move this whole thing back and forth inside here, which kind of tells me that, you know, you can move the bulb in and out inside here, which is almost like creating some sort of a focus inside this unit, which is uh, kind of bizarre. So, um, so pushing this back in like so, we'll just tighten this back up. And then on the front, it's got some form of a green glass or something in here. So, antique dust. So, this, if you look at the front, you can see how it would kind of turn and lock in there, right down in there. So, let's try and remove this. And uh, this here, I've no idea. I can't seem to find in their WAC manufactured and it has no info there. Maybe if there's a little bit more. So turn this and then this comes off and if you look in here it's got a spring-loaded device in here so you could actually change the color of this. So it almost looks like it's designed to create some sort of focus in here so you can see like if you move that nut on the back it moves this whole thing in and out so maybe it was a bulb with a lens on it or something like that and that you could move it you know closer and further away from this and it would create some sort of focus on this kind of an interesting looking little outlet on the front there right so I imagine you just press on this right and then this piece would come out Almost looks like a piece of bottle glass or something like that. Kind of prismatic, almost weird, very strange. So there's that. So I don't, definitely don't want to lose that. And then in there, almost looks like an old camera flash. Uh, remember the old camera flashes that were on cameras and you'd stick the disposable camera flash bulb in there? Oh, I, I have one of uh, those camera flash bulbs that is absolutely monstrous. It's the size of a light bulb. So um, I imagine being flashed by that thing would you know, cause some high damage. So anyways, uh, if I can find that, I'll maybe bring that down. Uh, but at, at any rate, the, uh, so it looks like, yeah, like a standard bulb would fit in here. So it's uh, 6.5 volts on this side. So obviously a 6 volt light bulb, uh, bayonet style, maybe from an old car. Now I have an older car that has a 6 volt system in it and I have some spare 6 volt bulbs kicking around so what I'll do is I'll go grab a 6 volt bulb we'll put it in and see what happens how does that sound all right I found a 6 volt automotive bulb in my stuff here so I'll put this in here does it fit it does okay so it does go in there and uh, let's put the cover back on this thing see what happens I don't think it's too important to lock the thing, but um, so I'll plug this into my current limited isolation transformer and Variac supply. And I'll put this on current limit over here, first of all. So I turn that down, current limit, turn this on, bring it up, make sure nothing is, ah, it looks like it's okay. Yeah, okay, so I'll hit through. So that is what it looks like there. I'll shut this other light off. That's what it looks like there. Kind of a strange prismatic kind of a light in there. That's really bizarre. Here, I'll use a filter on my camera here. You see that? Kind of a bizarre kind of kind of bizarre looking. But it is a it's a really nice color actually. The green itself is um, I would say is a, a very nice looking green color. It looks very much like a like an old 7 up bottle or something like that, right? That uh, that's been lit up. And there's the bulb in there. So again, you can see the little bulb down in there, a little 6 volt bulb glowing. 
So there it is. Seems to be you know working now. What this does, I have no idea. Obviously, the, everything needs to be tightened up. It does. Things are loose here, so it's probably the connection on this side here is you know because it uses this as a ground, right? So if I was to lift this out of the base, the bulb would go out, right? Right? Because it uses this as a ground. So kind of interesting. I also noticed that uh, this wire here. It feels like rubber. I think this is a rubber. So it's got rubber and cloth wiring on the other side here, which is uh, kind of interesting. I'll just uh, move this out a little bit. So now, what I think this might be is, I don't know. Okay, so this is just an absolute guess. Obviously, you know, like if this was going to sit up, maybe if this was bright enough, you could sit an egg on here or something like that. So you know how they... Uh, used to put, you know, light up eggs to see if the egg was good, right? The, um, the you know, maybe, because this looks like maybe an egg would sit on here or something like that. Now, I don't think this would be bright enough with this bulb, but maybe, you know, purpose. This is far enough in that the, the base of the egg wouldn't hit it. And um, something like that, or maybe something to look at, you know, something to do with film or something, uh, maybe to light something up with a tool. I have no idea. So uh, that, that's my guesses with this thing, you know. <laughs> it's, I could be far off, could be miles off of this. So uh, that's what the thing is. Oh, and I found that uh, camera flash bulb. So do you remember those old blue flash bulbs that you used to stick in the top of a camera? Sometimes when you had uh, the newer ones, you would, you would take the, you would snap a picture and then the little cube would rotate. I'm sure if some of you remember that. It's probably a blast from the past for some of you, those things. And then you'd, you know, take another picture and it would rotate. And every time the little uh, little bulb would, the flash would burn out and you'd have to go to the next one. That's why it would rotate. So they're disposable flash, little flash cartridges, usually a little cube, right? Flash cubes. Well, before that, they had these things. It's the size of a light bulb. I can't even imagine being flashed by something like that. So, um... Yeah, so that's the um, a little wire inside there. Now, I wouldn't even want to test this with my digital voltmeter or something like this because that could go off. That could flash. Very fine wire. All it takes is an extremely small, even static sometimes can set these off, an extremely small charge. And if they go off and you're holding the bulb like this, you're going to get third degree burns. So uh, these things are crazy when they go off, and they're crazy bright, only good for one flash. So photo flash right there. So now whether this is good or not, I don't want to try it because this is more of a collector's item. I wouldn't want to try this, but um, yeah. There it is. And yes, I am taking a chance by definitely holding it up there. So probably shouldn't be doing that. Put that back over here. So anyways, that was a uh, neat old flash. If some of you remember those things, uh, actually using them, uh, feel free to comment on that as well, because that's, uh, that's going back, maybe even to the era of this thing. So uh, what do you think? What do you think this thing is? I have no clue. Let me know in the comments below, and uh, we'll see if we can get an answer to this thing. All right, hope you enjoyed. If you're interested in all things electronic, this is the place that you want to be. If you'd like to be notified as soon as I post a brand new video, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell symbol. There's a lot of stuff going on here at Mr. Carlson's lab. And on top of that, I have an ongoing electronics course on Patreon. Did you know that there's over 8,000 people there benefiting from that electronics course? Definitely check it out. I also share my electronic inventions and designs there as well. Right now, there's over 160 videos up on Patreon for you to learn from and to benefit from. So if you're interested in checking that out, I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comments section. Right now, there's a series there called How to Fix Just About Anything Electronic. It's a great series, and all I'm trying to do is pass my skill set on to you. All right. Until next time, take care. Bye for now.